When we're calculating derivatives, some of the really useful rules are the product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. Arguably, when we're looking at antiderivatives, or indefinite integrals, it's the anti-chain rule that plays the most important role, and it's also known as u-substitution. So let's briefly go over uh, the basic rule of u-substitution, or the anti-chain rule, and then we'll work out a couple examples. Let's take a look at the anti-chain rule, otherwise known as u-substitution. So let's begin um, with some function little f of x, and let's suppose that capital F of x is an antiderivative. So that is to say, um, the antiderivative of little f of x dx is capital F of x uh, plus c, or in other words, um, capital F prime of x is uh, little f of x. Okay, so now if we earn the situation, let's, um, let's talk through the chain rule for a moment. So let's suppose that we have some other variable u, which is some function of x, and what we could consider is sticking u inside of capital F. And what we could do is then take the derivative as a function of x of f of u. Okay, so the point is that because u is not x, we think of u as a function of x, and we have to use the chain rule when evaluating this derivative. So what do we get? You get the derivative of the outside, plug in the inside, times the derivative of the inside, uh, let's just call it du by dx, and of course the derivative of capital F is the function little f, right? So I can call this f of u du by dx. But now I can say this backwards uh, in the language of antiderivatives. What this says is that capital F of u is a function whose derivative is f of u times du by dx. Let's write that. This says that an antiderivative of f of u du by dx with respect to dx is f of u plus c. But now if you think about it, f of u plus c is an antiderivative for f of u thought of as a function of u. So this is just this equation I have up here, except I'm just calling my variable u instead of x. And what do I find? I find this same uh, expression, right? And this is how u substitution is, is typically written. What if you, if you read it like this, f of u uh, du by dx dx is equal to the antiderivative of f of u du. If we uh, read uh, like that, then what it really uh, leads us to say is that we should maybe call this quantity uh, du. And if we do that, then this gives us a way of nicely simplifying our antiderivatives. So we set this kind of a notational convention to make this all kind of look uh, logical, du to be, take the derivative of u as a function of x, dx. Okay, let's apply this just in a very quick example, just to see what we're talking about. Let's suppose we want to take the antiderivative of the function x times e, uh, let's say 2x times e to the x squared dx. Well, what we can do is we can say, let's think about this, e to the x squared, as some function stuck inside of some other function. So here, I'm going to say that my, um, my u is going to be x squared. So u, in this u substitution game, is the thing that's stuck inside of the other function. And what happens when we do that? Well, this rule says that I should call du, then, the derivative of that, 2x dx. And then what it says is that if I have, let me just rewrite this a little bit, as e to the x squared times 2x dx, and this thing says that if I find an expression that looks like du dx dx, namely this guy right there, that looks like my du, I should call that thing du, and then I can rewrite my integral as the integral of e to the u, remember x squared is just u, 
du. And now I can do this integral just as if u was my variable and not x. And of course, the antiderivative e to the u is itself, plus c. And then to finish, I can convert this uh, in terms of x again, e the x squared plus c. And that's an antiderivative.